Hi, my name is Pip and this is my review of Brene Brown's Braving the Wilderness. This was my second Brene book, so I kind of went on a little bit of a Brene spree. So I found some really interesting videos of hers on YouTube where she was talking about shame and vulnerability and the importance of empathy and um, I just found them really fascinating. And so the first book I started off uh, with my brene -thon was about the power of vulnerability. Uh, this one is Braving the Wilderness. This one I didn't like quite as much as the power of vulnerability because this one is more about belonging and um, it's definitely a little bit more about uh, Brene's personal search for belonging, which didn't affect my enjoyment of it. I think it was a great example. Um, but I think that perhaps I didn't relate to this book as much because I have personally always had a very strong sense of belonging and uh, have always walked away from things where you walk into it and you go, it doesn't feel right, I don't think I'm right in this situation, Ooh, I don't think we gel well. I have always just walked away from, from those, I don't know if that has something to do with the way I was raised or if that's just who I am as a person. Um, so I don't think that I found this work as powerful because maybe I didn't need to hear the message as much as I needed to hear the message about shame and vulnerability and um, how those two things really work together in terms of the creative process, in terms of being a functional human being and in terms of um, like personal pain relief. So while this book was still really great and it was and I did listen to it again as an audiobook because I like hearing certain types of books uh, the author I like to hear the author read it but I also do like audiobooks as a medium um, it, there's still a lot of things to learn here but I think that this this book is perhaps a little bit more appropriate for someone who doesn't necessarily feel like they belong or struggles to find a place where they feel like they belong whereas I've always been pretty comfortable with flying solo rather than trying to force myself to um, fit somewhere where I don't feel like I belong I am totally fine to fly solo so for me this book isn't as profound but definitely it still has a lot of really interesting information in it and it's still really well presented so I'm going to read a few quotes from the book that I think were really powerful moments and that really resonated with me. Some of them were thoughts that I have definitely had myself and feelings I've had myself and there's just no way I would be able to articulate them this well. Um, so I'm going to share some of those with you now. Here's what I believe. If you are offended or hurt when you hear Hillary Clinton or Maxine Waters called bitch, whore, or the C word, you should be equally offended and hurt when you hear the same words used to describe Ivanka Trump, Kellyanne Conway, or Theresa May. If you felt belittled when Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters a basket of deplorables, then you should have felt equally concerned when Eric Trump said Democrats aren't even human. When the President of the United States calls women dogs or talks about grabbing pussy, we should get chills down our spine and resistance flowing through our veins. When people call the President of, Uni of the United States a pig, we should reject that language regardless of our politics and demand discourse that doesn't make people subhuman. When we hear people referred to as animals or aliens, we should immediately wonder, is this an attempt to reduce someone's humanity so that we can get away with hurting them or denying, their basic, uh, denying them basic human rights? If you are offended by a meme of Trump photoshopped looking like Hitler, then you, should ha you shouldn't have Obama photoshopped looking like the Joker on your Facebook feed. There is a line, it's etched in dignity, and raging fearful people from the right and the left are crossing it at unprecedented rates every single day. We must never tolerate dehumanization, the primary instrument of violence that has been used in every genocide recorded throughout history. So I think that, even though it's a really long quote, is super important because it's such a valid point and um, she really talks a lot about your language choices and um, the way that can really dehumanize a person and uh, it's just important, I think, for people to actually think about the choices of the words they use. There's two other quotes. So the next one is, People often silence themselves or agree to disagree without fully exploring the actual nature of the disagreement for the sake of protecting a relationship and maintaining a connection. 
but when we avoid certain conversations and never fully learn how the other person feels about all of the issues, we sometimes end up making assumptions that not only perpetuate but deepen misunderstandings and that can generate resentment. And the last quote is, in order for slavery to work, in order for us to buy, sell, beat and trade people like animals, Americans had to completely dehumanize slaves. And whether we directly participated in that or we were simply a member of a culture that at one time normalized that behavior, it shaped us. We can't undo that level of dehumanizing in one or two generations. I believe that Black Lives Matter is a movement to rehumanize black citizens. All lives matter, but not all lives need to be pulled back into a moral inclusion. Not all people were subjected to the psychological process of demonizing and being made less human so we could justify the inhumane practice of slavery. The Black Lives Matter point I found particularly fascinating and I think really the more we can know about these subjects, the better. And so I'm going to try and go down a pathway where I learn a little bit more about that. Uh, it is. I think something that is in many different cultures and many different nations and it's just hideous. So I've heard Australians say, well, you know, we don't really understand slavery because we didn't have it. And it's like, well, just look at what happened to the indigenous population. So um, I, I think that it's a, a really important thing to read more about and to educate yourself on, particularly as a privileged white person. Um, you're just not going to understand to the same level because you're not going to have that experience. So I think um, that's definitely a path that I'm looking to go down next year in terms of what I read. So if you have any recommendations, then definitely let me know below in the comments. So even though I didn't find this book as mind blowing as The Power of Vulnerability, because as I said, I think my own personal sense of belonging is pretty reasonable. Um, I still found it really interesting. I still learnt a lot from it and I really don't think that you can ask for more than that from a book. So I would again definitely recommend that you check out the work of Brene Brown. I think that she has done quite a lot of work in a number of areas that are really important that people are often actually really uncomfortable talking about and her work is extremely powerful. So definitely check out Brene.